what is up people and welcome to another video in this video we're going to be taking a look at kubernetes services so basically service discovery load balancing and how applications talk to one another inside kubernetes and we're basically going to unbox the magic of all of this in this video so without further ado let's go So in the traditional networking world, applications and servers talk to one another over IP addresses. Now, IP address is not a really good practice to use because an IP address can be changed. So instead, in the networking world, we use DNS. So DNS gives you a name. You resolve that name to an IP address instead. But someone has to manage all the, the roster of these DNS names. Every time we want to add a new application, we have to update DNS records. We also have to load balance. So we need to create a load balancer, point the DNS to the load balancer, and then NAT the load balancer back to the applications. And this is also, there's a lot of port management involved here as well. So here's the thing, it's 2019. Ain't nobody got no time for managing DNS, IP addresses, load balancers, NATing, and port uh, management. When humans manage these things, humans make mistakes, and humans make mistakes more often than not. So in the Kubernetes world, we have this concept called namespaces. A namespace is a logical group of resources. So we created this namespace called bar and we deployed a deployment to this namespace with a replicas of two. So we got two pods running. Now in a, in a previous video, I'll put the link in the description, I covered pods and deployments and how they work. Now at this point in time, Kubernetes will assign IP addresses to these pods. Now again, these IP addresses are not really useful to us because they change. Also, these pods can run on any machine. They're not necessarily running on the same machine. They could be running on different machines. How do we make a network call to these um, pods? Now, Kubernetes has a concept of service. We create a service called Foo, in this case. What Kubernetes does, it has this really con a powerful concept of labeling. So we label our pods. So we apply these labels called app equals Foo on all our pods. And Kubernetes has this concept of label selector. So on the service, we supply a selector that says, I want to select every pod where app equals foo. So what this does is it creates a binding between the service and the two pods behind the deployment. And this creates endpoints. So if we look at the service, we can see two endpoints be created. Now, the other thing that a service allows us to do is it allows us to run across a standard port. So we can say across the company that we run on port 80 and we don't have to worry about port conflicts. It's also automatically load balanced between these two pods. So we don't need to create a load balancer as well. The other thing that Kubernetes allows us to do is we basically get this endpoint called HTTP foo and there's a DNS service running inside of the cluster that gives us this foo DNS record automatically. So if we have a pod running within the namespace, this pod can access our pods just making an HTTP call to foo and if we have another namespace and we have another pod outside of that inside that namespace it can also make a call to our service using a slightly different approach so it uses foo and then dot the name of the namespace so foo dot bar in this case and this allows us to basically um, it gives us service discovery it gives us load balancing dns all out of the box <music> So what does Kubernetes do behind the scenes? There's literally no real magic. It's all automation around Linux container features and Linux networking features. So let's say we have an environment of uh, three machines running in our Kubernetes cluster. They each have an IP address and we deploy our applications to this. Now, let's say we, for example, have pod A and pod B as containers running on this machine. These containers run on um, as part of the Docker runtime, so let's say, or any other container runtime, when these containers start up, um, Docker or the container runtime creates um, a Linux bridge. So you can see these bridges by running ifconfig or brctl show command in Linux, and you can see the bridge running as, a, as part of a subnet. So in this case, it creates a subnet 10.0.0, and then it assigns IP addresses to these container processes that run on, on this machine. So you can see here 10.0.1 and 10.0.2 has been assigned here. Now these IP addresses are kind of useless to us because if you see at this stage, the only these two containers can talk to each other because they run within the same subnet. But if we have 
um, our application let's say in the previous slide we had application foo deployed which has two pods pod c and pod d and let's say they're deployed on separate machines now they also have um, a container runtime running as part of a subnet and in this case their subnet is 10.1 and 10.2 so when we bootstrap a kubernetes cluster part of the process when you install the container runtime is to define these subnets on each of the machine and then what will happen is pod c and pod d will get their own ip addresses based off the subnet so we got 10.1.0.1 and 10.2.0.1 running and pod d can basically only communicate with um, containers or processes inside of this host and pod c is also isolated to within its host now how does kubernetes um, do the networking routing based on the services so if we apply um, our desired state with that service yaml file what happens pod a will do let's say pod a wants to call pod d our application foo um, it'll make a resolution to core dns to say hey i want to resolve um, foo and CoreDNS will come back to say, okay, you need to go to this IP 10.2.0.1. And what will happen is um, the traditional Linux routing will take care of this where um, the kernel will route the requests like any other process running on the machine. So in this case, pod A will try and make a network call to 10.2.0.1. It'll hit the kernel and the kernel will make the decision of where to go. Now, Linux has an IP tables feature and there is a component inside of Kubernetes called QProxy, which manages IP tables on each of the machines running as part of the cluster. So in this example here, we make a call to the kernel and the kernel uses the IP tables, um, which is managed by QProxy to make a decision on where to go. So in this case, you can see we're calling 10.2.0.1. So it is going to run as part of the 10.2.0.0 subnet. So the kernel knows, okay, you need to go based on the IP tables. You need to go to um, machine 192.168.0.3. So you need to route to the third machine in our cluster. And when that request goes out to the network and hits that machine, there's again another kernel running on that machine. And similarly, there's also IP tables on, on that machine. So QProxy manages IP tables on all these machines. So when the kernel has to route this packet to its destination, which is 10.2.0.1, um, it'll look at the IP address tables and say, hey, you need to go through this Linux bridge, which is where that subnet is basically running, and it'll hit the process. Now let's take a look at this in practice. When we say kubectl get deployments, we can see I have an example deployment of two pods um, running at the moment. And if we take a look at the YAML file for this deployment, we can see here that I have labels and I defined a label called app example app. So this is my label um, and every pod running in this deployment will be labeled um, with this example app label. I can also do kubectl get pods dash dash show labels. And when I run this, we can see our two pods are running and these are the labels that they have assigned to them i can then do kubectl get service and notice that um, only the default service for the kubernetes cluster is running so if we take a look at the yaml file i defined my own service called example service and here is the app selector so i say select um, app equals example app so now i'm telling the service and kubernetes that i want to create endpoints for the service based on this label so let's go ahead and apply that. So if I say kubectl apply dash f, it's in my Kubernetes folder. In the services folder, I have a services.yaml. And when I apply this, it goes and creates this example service. We then do kubectl get service and we can see our services up and running. Now, if I take the service name and I do kubectl describe service, and I paste the name of the service, we can see our service now has two endpoints defined. So that means our service is working. So this is a good way to troubleshoot your service to make sure it doesn't have any empty endpoints because sometimes people get the label selectors wrong and they end up not selecting any pods, which results to blank endpoints. And that means your service traffic will go nowhere. And finally, if we take a look at the service YAML, 
um, we've defined port 80 as where we will, we will accept traffic and then our target port is 5000 so we'll hit the container on port 5000 so it's very important that these ports do match you can either keep a standard across your organization to say everyone just use port 80 to make things simple because a lot of the times i find developers do mismatch of port numbers here which means um, again your traffic will go nowhere so thank you guys for watching hopefully um this all demystifies how services inside kubernetes work load balancing dns and all of those kind of magic things. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments um, what sort of stuff you'd like me to cover in the future. Like and subscribe, and until next time, peace.